Invasion, humanity's oldest tradition. Ever since the first hominid decided, hmm, this place seems nice, the second hominid would eventually come along and say, I agree, and then unalive him. But we've come a long way from Homo habilis, and made a lot of progress in the last two million years. Now we're in the information age, and killing your neighbor because you like his gable end wall is no longer socially acceptable. So these days, invasions only ever really happen between nations over things like resources, religion, bragging rights, or ethnic tension. Though, there was one exception to this rule. An invasion that happened as recently as 2010 not carried out on land, but online. And not initiated by an army, but by a band. And that band was Weedus. Weezer. Fuck. In 2008, Weezer were planning their long-awaited return following a three-year hiatus. This came in the form of a self-titled album best known for its color, Red. Red's lead single was titled Pork and Beans, and the band decided to go all out for its music video. On May 23rd, 2008, Weezer uploaded that music video to YouTube. It was a massive hit. According to Wired.com, it had already garnered 4 million views just five days after its release. It even earned the band their only Grammy win. More importantly, it was beloved by fans, especially in comparison to the divisiveness of the band's previous project. Adoration for this music video came from all angles, and the reason why is simple. It harnessed the internet. The Numa Numa Guy, Leave Britney Alone, Afro Ninja, Dramatic Chipmunk, Liam Kyle Sullivan, Tazon Day, The Evolution of Dance Guy, and many more. Weezer invited loads of internet celebrities to take part in the video and made reference to many others. It's the reason why Pork and Beans was so successful. Even outside of established fans, it got lots of eyes on the band, and the people watching liked what they saw. But the following year brought much less fanfare. In 2009, Weezer dropped their album, Ratitude. I've made so many videos on this band, and I have explained why Ratitude was bad in almost all of them. So let's just say this. Weezer's reputation was on fire in the 2000s. The Red Album and Pork and Beans poured a mug of water on that fire. Ratitude poured a dump truck of gasoline on it. The backlash was beyond strong for this album. So in 2010, when Weezer was gearing up to release their next album, Hurley, they needed to think outside the box. This is what the band's drummer, Pat Wilson, had to say about what came next. Someone someone had the idea of sort of like a pork and beans video in reverse, where instead of importing popular uh, people on YouTube, that we would go to them and run it in all of their streams at the same time. This idea was dubbed by the band as the YouTube Invasion, and it went exactly like that. In August, the band chose about 15 YouTubers and gave them each 30 minutes to record anything. And I mean anything. Weezer played no part in writing or preparing these videos, and they couldn't watch them until everyone else could. The only control Weezer had was the location. By watching these videos back to back, you can tell what was happening behind the scenes. Weezer rented out a studio for two days, and all the YouTubers went there. A tiny bit of prep was done beforehand, whether that be reading a short script or sheet music or whatever, and then they filmed. Frontman Rivers Cuomo told the Washington Street Journal, We always enjoy when we get asked to do things outside our comfort zone. We can't fall back on our musical abilities. And they really stepped out of their comfort zones. Their only condition was that the videos had to advertise Hurley. The rest was up to the creators. So let's look at what they made, in no particular order, and rate each one. No reason for the rating, really, just for the hell of it. I can't imagine genuinely disliking any of these videos. Hey, it's Fred! Fuck. You guys know Fred. First channel to hit a million subscribers, got a couple movies and TV shows, won 10% of the popular vote in 2012, and of course is the man behind this meme. Oh my God, but it's that meme comes from this collaboration, and uh... Sure is a Fred video. The plot goes as follows. Fred is an annoying kid who's trying to sell his debut album to record company, record company. After a short stint in the waiting room, Fred gets bored and runs around the building until he accidentally winds up in someone's fancy office. That office belongs to a big music industry agent whose next potential client is coming through the door. Oh my gamut, it's Weezer. Fred shows the Weezers his album, and they're impressed, but confused, because he's supposed to be an agent and also his character is canonically six years old. Luckily, Fred just so happened to have made a hologram showing Weezer performing on the moon. <sighs> Where did that laptop come from? He didn't come in with it. 
It wasn't on the desk when he came in. Why am I applying logic to a Fred video? Weezer do a Weezer huddle, and after some deliberation, they agreed to perform on the moon. Then, they were never seen again. Six out of ten, they died in space, and Fred makes me nostalgic. You know what doesn't make me nostalgic? What's happening, Forum? Ray William Johnson, the internet's first reaction channel. Though, as opposed to the newer breed, at least Ray tried to make jokes. Whoa! Double rainbow all the way! <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even use the past tense. The guy's still around, still just watching stuff and saying stuff. That's what he does in the Weezer collab, too. He watches some viral videos, tries to crack jokes, and at the end, he presents a random fan's question to be answered by commenters. Though in this video, the random fan is Rivers Cuomo, who asks, My comment question of the day is, what is the best name you can think of for a band? Then at the end, Ray plays a clip of Weezer performing the song Stalkin' Your Mom, a Your Favorite Martian song, which was Ray William Johnson's band. And that's it. That's the collaboration. I think it's cool how he got a band like Weezer to cover his song, but beyond that, it's a bit of a wasted opportunity. At least Fred made a skit. 2 out of 10. Hot for Words, a linguistics channel hosted and taught by Marina Orlova. Or at least it was, because she deleted all her videos and community posts while I was editing this video. Yippee. Don't worry, I still screenshotted and downloaded everything I needed, but it's still worth pointing out. What separates Marina from other educational channels, you ask? Assets. She teaches you the origins and pronunciation of words while having assets. Now that's multitasking. Sorry, sorry, I don't mean to talk dookie. If I had assets, I'd probably do this too. What I wouldn't do is come out of my years-long hiatus just to say the Me Too movement is a joke. Yikes, Marina. Moral failings aside, the video's pretty bad, too. Marina tries to do her usual shtick and explain the origins behind the words Weezer and Hurley, only to get interrupted by the band. Then, they explain the two names poorly, and Marina gets angry and gives them detention. It's a simple joke. It's short, inoffensive, not all that funny. 3 out of 10. Well, thankfully we got the most despicable YouTuber out of the way early. I mean, come on, who's shittier than a Harvey Weinstein supporter? What the fuck? If you don't know who Onision is, congratulations. Trust me when I say you're not missing out on anything. He's likely the worst YouTuber who's yet to be banned off the platform. He feeds off negative attention, so I'll keep this segment short. The video isn't funny, with or without shitbag, but the fact that he's in it does make it worse. Please don't watch his channel. Zero out of ten. Alright, no more assholes. Here's some genuinely good people. Shmoyoho or the Gregory Brothers. With their series, Songify This, they've made songs out of popular internet videos and YouTube channels for over a decade now. Dead Giveaway, Bed Intruder, Just Do It, It's Corn, Space Is Cool, Can't Hug Every Cat, Apparently, All The Way, Winning, Smash Mash Mash, Jabba The Hut, Chrissy Wake Up, Gingers Have Souls, Double Rainbow, and so many more! These guys are legends online. If you think you find their music annoying, it's probably because their songs can sometimes get too popular. Looking at you, corn boy. Alright, enough defending my childhood heroes. Besides, their collaboration with Weezer was a part of a separate series altogether. Auto-tune the news. As the name suggests, they made songs out of whatever was in the news, usually silly political stuff. This time, however, Shmoyoho auto-tuned the news to fit the backing track of Memories, Hurley's lead single. The political aspect of the video does age it a little bit. I doubt most people watching recognize anyone here besides Obama and maybe Mr. Wiener. But beyond that, it's a great use of the collaboration opportunity and pretty enjoyable. 8 out of 10. Vote Weezer for Congress. Dave Days. Never watched this guy. Apparently, he's best known for his parodies and covers of popular songs back in the day. In particular, it seems he was obsessed with Miley Cyrus and even did a few collaborations with her. Mandatory introduction aside, this video is cute. That detail about each YouTuber only getting 30 minutes to film with the band is really obvious here, but not in a bad way. The video is a tongue-in-cheek rock-paper-scissors tutorial with the band that was very clearly thought up and exercised on the spot. Like, they just play rock-paper-scissors, with future Dave cutting in every once in a while to explain his killer strategy, always using rock. The improvised nature of the video gives it this really authentic feel, and the comedy doesn't come forth like with some other videos. It's just fun. I like that they're having fun. 9 out of 10. Use, use other ones except for rock. What if I told it you? It works for Weezer. Taizan Day. If you don't recognize him from Pork and Beans, then odds are you recognize him from this iconic video. Uh, I'm gonna fart. Don't tell anybody. Oh god, that's terrible. <laughs> 
I hope the microphone didn't pick that up. <clears throat> that's uh, that's the wrong. That's not the right clip. He uh, he he did Chocolate Rain. Tayson Day is a YouTube musician who wrote a song called Chaos, and Weezer sang on it a bit. It's not my cup of tea, but judging by the comments, it is that of others. So that's good. More recently, this song was one of many to be forcibly unlisted from YouTube due to an unknown error. I couldn't find much about this online, so I guess it's time to move on to the next video. Holy shit! Tally Hall reference. Thirteen out of ten. U.S. of Anderson. Com. Oh, the memories I have with this guy. This is by far the channel I knew the least about. I mean, they hardly had a thousand subscribers 12 years ago. You can't blame me. But the website in their username did clear things up a bit. In 2009, aspiring filmmaker and musician Dave Anderson set out on a cross-country trip with his Russian pal, Nikolai. That's where the US and US of Anderson comes in. Though the reason for this collaboration stems from a different project. Dave had a viral video, a mock advertisement for a camp for sexually active... Ugh. Can't say that on 2022 YouTube. This video works as a bit of a sequel to that one. Anderson again pitches the concept of the camp, this time to Weezer. He gives them shirts, sings them a little song, drops some bars. I'm like a leprechaun with just one day a year when my bitches don't yelp and my homes don't fear. And promptly leaves. This one has a similarly improvised feel to the Dave Days video, but with a bit more effort put into it. It's clear the only direction Dave gave the band was to act annoyed and bothered by him, so it's really funny to see them try to hide their laughter. Some of the lyrics in his improvised song gave me a giggle, and his willingness to make himself the butt of a joke was charming. Just not as charming as Rock, Paper, Scissors. 7 out of 10. The Key of Awesome, another parody music channel. Though for as absolutely massive as some of these videos are, I never watched any of them. Doesn't matter though, since their collab with Weezer wasn't even a parody. It seems to be one of very few music projects by the channel not parodying anything, instead being a very genuine anniversary gift from the channel's frontman Mark Douglas to his wife, Anastasia. And it's a legitimate love song, lighthearted but fully fledged out nonetheless. Brian does backup vocals, Pat and Scott at the very least mime doing their instruments, and Rivers shares the chorus with Mark. It's just a genuine collaboration, and I don't know, it's not bad. It's sweet, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. I feel like a more critical listener could find some reason to dislike it, but I enjoyed Anastasia. 7 out of 10. Keep the Heat, music parody channel. I'm noticing a pattern. This one died a long time ago, though. Like, their second most recent video is an Xbox One and PlayStation 4 giveaway. This video, however, is a parody of See Me Now by Kanye West titled See My Snuggie. It features Distorm Power, Michael Gregory of Shmoyoho, the computer Nerd 01, Mark Douglas of the Key of Awesome, and of course Weezer as, uh, well, Weezer are right around, uh, hmm. You gotta be here somewhere. I mean, this video is listed in the description of the behind the scenes video on Weezer's channel. It's an official part of the invasion. Maybe if we keep scrubbing the. Wait, wait, wait! There, there it is! That, that's it! That's it? The, the Weezer Snuggie? Appears twice in the video? That's the collaboration? Weezer wasn't even in it? It doesn't even link to Hurley in the bio? Where is the Weezer? I was promised Weezer! I guess Keep the Heat couldn't keep his promise. Wait, wait, hold on. What did he just say in that background clip? Why do you keep coming undone? Why do you keep coming undone? Coming undone, 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 undone! One at a ton. Alright, no more music parody channels. They can't be trusted. St. Sanders is a music parody channel with a series much in the same vein as Bad Lip Readings. Titled Shreds, it takes a music video by a band, cuts the audio, reads their lips, makes silly lyrics out of the lip reading, and sings those to the backing track of the original song. The channel's most popular parody was of the song I Was Made For Lovin' You by Kiss titled I Will Never Go To School, or simply Kiss Shreds. It's alright, lots of random humor, but I did laugh out loud at this. Where's the camera? Oh my! The Weezer collaboration was just a replica of this video with Weezer taking Taking the place of Kiss, presumably singing the lyrics of the parody. I say presumably because the singing is absent. There's no vocal track. I don't get it. Some comments imply this wasn't an accident. This is intentionally an instrumental cover of the Kiss Shreds video by the band. But the joke was the lyrics. This is just a band performing a song. Even if it was intentional and not removed by a glitch or something, half the comments are talking about the lack of vocals. At least they were in this one. Four out of ten. Man, these last few videos have been frustrating. Trying to figure out the channels and the joke behind the videos and where Weezer fits in, it's just inconvenient. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to break the flow of the video just to complain. I'm just saying it's a little... 
annoying. He's orange. Annoying orange. He's orange. Annoying orange. He's orange. <laughs> Apologies to anyone old enough to drink. You just wouldn't understand what it was like to be an insufferable little brat watching this channel as your parents desperately insisted you use headphones. These were just the perfect videos for a rapscallion like me growing up, and the Weezer collab was no different. It's the channel's third parody of the What's Up Budweiser commercials. I should probably make fun of their overuse of an already dated joke at this point, but I don't care. I had the biggest fucking smile the entire Entire time watching this. Weezer just fit perfectly in this environment. Pat, Brian, and Scott are a party platter, and Rivers is a bonsai tree. I am certain all my love for this video comes from nostalgia and my love for Weezer, but that doesn't make me love it any less. It makes me warm and fuzzy inside, and I'm tired of pretending it doesn't. They killed Brian Bell. 9 out of 10. Seer, or Vincent Seer for long, is best known today for streaming on Twitch, but he started out as just a regular old comedian making skits in his bedroom at the very dawn of YouTube. Although he's listed on Epitaph's list of Weezer Invasion collaborators, the article specifically writes that his video was launching later this week. My guess, it never launched. I can't find it anywhere. That or it was taken down. This playlist made in 2011 has all the Weezer Invasion videos on YouTube. 15 videos. But when you click on it, one unavailable video is hidden, meaning it was privatized or deleted. That most likely was Sears. Either way, there's no use wasting time on it. DNF out of 10. Joe Penna, or the Mystery Guitar Man. Best known for his guitar covers and stop motion guitar covers, his style can be best compared to Seth Everman today. Mostly silent musicians with a good sense of humor, though with much more emphasis on some impressive editing skills on Joe's side. That's what his Weezer collab relies on most heavily, compositing these short clips of the guys onto these little canvases and combining their individual talents to recreate memory. And it does that very well. Nothing to pick apart or mock, really. What you see is what you get. Though it is strange how this video was uploaded in April of 2011. All these videos are meant to promote an album launching in September of 2010, and Joe's video was also marked as launching later this week on Epitaph's article. So either this video got really delayed, or it was uploaded, taken down, then uploaded again. Which could also explain the hidden video in that one playlist. Doesn't matter, really. At least we can watch this one. 9 out of 10. And last, but certainly not least, How To Be Tight, Episode 3 by Magic Hugs or Scott Blair. I didn't mean to save this one for last, but I guess it worked out pretty nicely because this video is actually River's favorite. It's an interview conducted by a character of Scott's called Chaz, who is a dick. Shut up. Oh, shut up. Fuck you. And he interviews Weezer while being a dick. Maybe like two people out there want to know like how you guys got started. Well, actually... We've been together, uh... Cuomo specifically listed this as the reason why he liked the video. Unlike other more mainstream and sanitized interviewers, Scott Blair wasn't afraid to interrupt and mock the singer. Scott Blair. Hmm. You know, come to think of it, that name sounds familiar. Not familiar like I've watched his channel before, but familiar like I've mentioned him in a video before. At the Palladium Lounge, there was a game show hosted by Scott Blair of Magic Hugs. Oh, Brian shit! Bell's Apparently Cuomo had such a good experience with the comedian that he invited him to host a game show on the Weezer Cruise. That bit of trivia and the quality of the video is enough to give us our only 10 out of 10. Alrighty then. That's all the videos in Weezer's YouTube Invasion. We've laughed, we've cried, we've cringed as Marina Orlova desperately tried to argue that Harvey Weinstein isn't a bad guy, but overall, I think the experience was mostly positive. The question now is, was it successful? Did Weezer succeed at what they were setting out to do? Did Hurley rise to the heights of pork and beans? Absolutely not. The hardcore Weezer fans watching already know what's going down. Hurley is likely Weezer's biggest flop. Not in the sense that it was panned critically, it did all right, but it sold like shit. It peaked at number six on Billboard's top album sales chart and only stayed on the list for eight weeks. For reference, the band's previous album, Ratitude, peaked at seven but stayed for 13 weeks, and Pork and Bean's album, Red, peaked at number four and stayed on for 23 weeks. That's not even mentioning how well the Blue album did. The invasion couldn't save Weezer. Ratitude put them in a hole they wouldn't escape until 2014, or arguably even 2016 in terms of sales, but it wasn't a total failure. According to Epitaph, four days after the videos went up, they had garnered a combined total of around 5,277,000 views. Today, that number has skyrocketed to well over 42 million combined views, with the top four videos all having over 5 million views. Weezer really succeeded at getting their name out there in a positive way. 
So many comments on these videos are applauding the band for stepping out of their comfort zone. And clearly, there are still people who watch them today. The YouTube invasion is by far the video idea that has gotten suggested to me the most, and it's not even close. People care about this project, and excluding a few bad apples, it's worth caring about. These videos have mountains of effort and charm poured into them, and they deserve to be watched. So, I link that playlist in the description below, and I leave the rest to you. What was your favorite YouTube Invasion video? Do you have any memories watching them when they first came out? And leave your interesting or creative responses in the comment section below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe if you like me. I've been Mark But Evil, and I still don't know how to end these.